my channel. In this video today, I'm going to be recreating a really good friend of mine's work. His name is Zach Zenga on Instagram. I'll pop all of his links and pictures here. So essentially, he did a holographic look and I wanted to recreate it for my channel. So mine turned out as more of a watercolor look with more drips and blobs and not so evenly blended. So it's quite easy and I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please give it a very big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started. To start this video out, I'm going to apply a flawless base. So I'm using a full coverage foundation and buffing that into my skin to get a really nice airbrushed look. Once I've buffed it all in with a brush, I'm then going to switch over to a sponge and really press the product in to remove any streaks or lines that may have occurred. Once I've got my base all pressed in, I'm then going to move on to concealer. So I'm taking my Maybelline concealer and applying that underneath my eyes in an upwards motion down the center of my face to brighten it up and highlight. You then want to buff that up towards your ears and that's going to really lift the face as you guys can see and then just press the rest into your skin. Also apply a little bit on your lids and that's going to act as a primer. To set that all in place I'm taking my RCMA No Colour Powder and I'm going to be baking so applying it heavily underneath my eyes, lightly on my lids to set and in all of the places that I've applied concealer. If you leave it for about 5 minutes it's not only going to set the areas but also brighten and highlight them. As you guys can see it gives a slight white cast. I'm then going to set the rest of my face with my Australis Fresh and Flawless Powder and buff that bake away after the 5 minute time period. Starting on brows I'm taking a pencil from Colourpop and running that through the tail to define the arch. I've been really loving the natural brushed up look so for the front of the brow I'm going to create light soft feathered strokes to imitate real brow hairs. Now I'm going to lightly brush that through with my spoolie and then take a brow tint to set that all in place. I'm going to brush the hairs upwards really carefully. This is not only going to set it in place but it's also going to darken and define each hair. Now I do like the tail to be quite sharp and crisp so I'm going to take a concealer and run that around the brow and just tidy up any areas where it got a little bit too fluffy. I'm then going to take a large concealer brush and really tidy up and clean up underneath the brow as well to give it a nice sharp line. Starting on the watercolour side I'm taking a bright fluoro pink paint and I'm going to start applying that in my brow and filling it in. I'm not going to go to the trouble to feather the brow hairs upwards, I'm just going to fill it in a nice block colour in a similar shape to the other brow. Once I've got all of that done and dried, it's time to move on to the eyes. I'm taking this soft red shadow and buffing it through my crease. I'm going to be doing a cut crease look today so I will be avoiding the lid area and just packing that colour in through the crease quite heavy and blending it out into a cat eye shape. To give it more of a softer look, I'm taking this burnt orange colour and using that as my transition shade and blending that into the red up onto my brow bone. You will need to of course highlight your brow bone area so take a nice soft matte vanilla shade and blend it away. To add a pop of colour in this look, I'm taking a bright orange shadow on a pencil brush and densely packing that along my lower lash line to give it a really pigmented effect. I wanted to have a really bright and bold pop of colour to really contrast with the watercolour body paint so I feel like the orange and the red works perfectly. I'm going to also drag that through my crease and now it's time to start creating my cut crease. If you've never done a cut crease before, the easiest way is to have your crease colour already blended, take a concealer on a concealer brush and start to map out the area where you want the lid to be. It's a lot easier to do this and it helps you get it nice and even on both eyes so I'm going for a nice winged eyeliner shape. I'm then going to take this pearlescent blue colour and pack that on the lid just on the area that we have carved out. This is going to be a base for our silver shadow so it's a nice iridescent colour. Once I've got that even on both sides I'm taking a glitter adhesive and packing it on with my hands and then taking this cosmetic glitter in a bright silver colour and packing it just on the inner corner and the centre of the lid. I didn't want the outer corner to be completely glitter because it does look quite harsh so to give it more of a softer look I left it with eyeshadow. I then took that same pearlescent iced blue eyeshadow and packed it over the top of the glitter just to give it more of a softer and dustier look. I didn't want it to be too glittery and shiny so that kind of mattified it a little bit. I then curled and prepped my lashes and then moved straight on to eyeliner. I took the NYX liquid liner and started to apply a nice dramatic long wing and I didn't go too thick this time so it was kind of out of my comfort zone. I love nice thick dramatic liner but I wanted it to show more of the lid colour today. I'm then going to take some lashes, these are called Knockout from House of Lashes and I'm going to pop those on each eyes for a nice dramatic flare that's also kind of spacey and you can see through the glitter on the lid. I'm taking more of that orange and red shadow and buffing it along my lower lash line to make it more dramatic and smoky. To finish off the eyes I then just took some mascara and applied it onto my bottom lashes to give it a nice spacey and long look. 
Of course, I had to touch up my beauty mark and then I moved straight on to contouring. I went in with more of a soft and sculpting contouring today, so I applied that just underneath my cheekbones and around my forehead to give myself a soft bronzed look. Once I was done with that, I went on to highlighter. This is the Sports Girl Cream Highlighter, which is absolutely amazing. And you guys know the drill with this. I'm going to apply that on all of the highest points of my face to give myself some glow. To finish off the beauty portion of the video, I'm going to pop on some lipstick. This is Kat Von D's Liquid Lip in the shade Bow and Arrow. It's a nice nudie brown, and I'm going to pop that on slightly larger than where my lip line is to give myself a soft pout. All of the products that I've used today will be listed in the description box below for any of you guys that are wondering. Now it's time for me to start on my body paint portion of the video. The first thing I'm doing is taking my NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk and looking at Zach's photo as a reference, I'm lightly outlining the area where I want my blobs and drips to go. Now I think if you had the time and the patience, this would be an amazing technique to use all over the body, down your neck, chest and arms. So I just wanted to throw that idea out there for any of you that have the time and want to get really creative with this stuff. The pattern is amazing and the idea is fantastic. So to start out this design, I found it easiest to take a yellow paint and put down my starting areas of where I want my rainbows and colours to flare out from. One was from the centre of my forehead, one was on my temple, on my nose area and on my chin. I started out with yellow, then I went on to green, pink, blue, and then I started to add in all different colours in between. I feel like it's easier to have starting points and try to use the same colours in each area and then they just slowly blend out and fade into each other. Now a design like this can be quite tricky so it's always great to have some reference photos. I looked up some holographic images, some tie-dye images and even heat thermal reference photos. Just having these in front of you is really going to help you understand the placement and the colours that you should be putting together. I found it really helpful to have these images in front of me just as a reference and for inspiration purposes. All of the different colour combinations I could make, the different shapes that I should be using to make it flow and sit better, to make it look more realistic. So I do highly recommend doing that, just googling images and having some fun. As you guys can see here, I'm just laying down essentially all of the base colours. Once I've popped them all down, I'm then going to start going in and customising the different colours. I didn't want it to be too straight and I really didn't want it to look placed. Everything needed to be organic and flowing into itself. When I began the body paint, I was using different brushes for every colour, so I didn't have to struggle washing in between. But I figured out that using one brush for the whole entire look is going to get you the most consistent and even blending. So here I'm just using an angled paintbrush washing it off very well in water and then also dabbing any excess and blotting it off on a tissue. So I found that that is the easiest way if you guys are struggling with getting it blended. Also I was using my fingers and sometimes any excess paint that was on the brush to kind of blend the colours together. So from going light blue to dark blue, purple to pink and things like that. So I was really happy with how the forehead was coming along but the under eye area just started to look a little bit weird. I wasn't happy with the shape so I wasn't going to go ahead and blend it all out because it wasn't looking good. I ended up just taking it off and starting that whole area again. If you layer the paints too much, they will get muddy and just turn into one ugly mixed colour. So I took it off and started again with fresh paint. Now, if you're familiar with working with water activated paints, you would know the less water you apply, the more thick and pigmented and creamy your product is gonna be. If you apply lots of water, you're gonna get nice light washes of paint. So you can use that to your advantage to build it up and mess around and layer everything in the way that you need to make sure that you're getting the washes of paint that you need, pigmented or not, to achieve this look. So it's really about playing with the product, understanding the product that you're using and just having fun with colours. Once I had finished all of the body paint, I did consider taking some black or brown eyeshadow and popping it around the edges to make it look like there is shading there, as if the fluoro watercolour was sitting off of my skin. I decided against it because I was really loving the crescent shape that it was giving around my eye and I didn't want to disturb that with any colour. I then went in and tied my hair up and popped on this grey wig. This is a grey lace front wig from Uniwigs. If you want to know any more about it, I'll leave it all in the description box below. So that's it everybody, that is the end of my tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a very big thumbs up because it helps me out so much. If you're not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put up weekly body paint and special effects tutorials. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.